Good morning, fam, and God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Diva. It's your bro, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Sam Lopez, Brother Sam in the building. So this is the Morning Devo, and we're trying to get these things done, man, earlier. And um, pray for brother, because I'm no, no way a morning person, but if it's for the better of the community, for the people who want to watch this earlier or listen to this earlier, I'm all about it. Amen. So pray for a brother that God will give me the strength, amen, and the um, ability to take it down at night instead of take it up at night, amen. I'm a night owl, so I, I usually like to be, my creative juices come more at in the ne- night than in the day, if that makes any sense. But God can change that around. Amen. The goodness of God, we're going to be talking about that today because he is good. Amen. And we see him all over his goodness. If you're not careful, let me just say this. If you look at the world and what's going on right now, amen, in the world system, whatever's happening, and maybe in your life, in your personal life, in your family, in your relationships, in your marriage, and you know, in your job, in your school, if you look at that and you're keen on the, the evilness and the wickedness of um, the system that's operating in those areas, then you might miss the goodness of God that is right there in front of you. Amen. You might miss the goodness of God that's working things out for the good for those who love and obey the Lord. You might miss it. And I don't want nobody to miss the goodness of God. Amen. You can see the goodness of God daily, literally. And you don't have to even try hard. So today we're talking about evidence of God and his goodness. There is tons of evidence of God and his goodness. Do you see the goodness of God in today's world? In today's world. Because, listen, let's face it. We're here on purpose for a purpose. God chose this generation to be here, to see what we're seeing, to do what we do, to respond how we respond for a purpose and plan that he set forth times and times past. Amen. Because he's an all-knowing, omniscient all seeing God. Amen. And he's an eternal God. So what he did in the past, amen, is what we're catching up to what he's doing in our future. If that makes any sense, God is an eternal God. He doesn't sit on our time clock. Amen. He sits outside of time and reveals himself in our time so that we can see his goodness on this earth. Good morning, brother Ricky. God bless you. Yes. Thank God for another day. Amen. Praise the Lord. And good morning um, to you as well on Facebook. God bless you. Welcome to the morning Devo. So listen, evidence of God and his goodness. Amen. Cause God is good right here in the morning Devo. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, um, don't hesitate to leave them on the live stream. If you're listening from the podcast, from whatever platform you're listening from, please subscribe to the podcast because you could take the podcast with you anywhere and you don't have to look at a screen. You don't have to search for a video or anything like that. Audio is very powerful. Amen to this very day. So it's all good. So if you haven't subscribed to my podcast, do so. Um, you can catch me at live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. There's a podcast button. Go press that and then um, subscribe to whatever platform I put. Four popular platforms up there that you could choose from, or you could go directly um, through my uh, direct podcast network, amen, and subscribe there. It's totally free, so um, it'll be a blessing uh, for me to have you on my subscriptions, amen. So let's pray. We're going to take a minute to pray, amen, and after we pray, we'll take 60 seconds to share this out. You might be like, wait, somebody needs evidence of God and his goodness uh, besides us, right? So you might want to share this to that person and you can share it different ways. You can share the podcast, the audio only, or you can share the live stream or the YouTube, however you want to share it. But don't think that God cannot reach those people that we can't. In other words, the person that you think in your in your wildest imagination would ever listen um, to an evangelistic right podcast or live stream or the gospel, um, you'll be surprised how God could change the hearts of the people. Amen. So all we do is plant seeds. All we do is invite people. All we do is put um, positive things on our posts on social media or on YouTube or whatever. Wherever we are, we stay positive because we got the most positive person living inside of us by way of Holy Spirit. We have God in the form of Holy Spirit, the third person of our Holy Trinity. Amen. And that's an amazing thing, an amazing thing. So they can see the goodness. They can see the hope. They can see the treasure that we um, have inside of us and we could just share. What we do is share, right? Preach the gospel, go and make disciples. That's we're commissioned and anointed to do it. Amen. So that person 
share it to that person that you think never in a thousand years will listen or watch uh, anything like this. And I, I, well, I know God to know <clears throat> enough about God that he could do that. He could transform the hearts of the people that we think cannot be changed. And you're looking at one right in front of you. Amen. Or you're listening to one on the other side of the mic. So let's pray. And after we pray, we'll take 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as we can. And when we come back, we're going to go into Acts chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. We're going to be in there today on the morning deal. You ready? Father, I thank you for every single person that's connected and who will connect later. For every single person on the other side of the camera or on the other side of the mic. I thank you for their lives. I pray, Lord God, prosperity, peace. I pray that they will re-engage with the goodness that you have shared with them daily. In Jesus' name, I pray prosperity. I pray healing. I pray that this culture will not get into our kingdom mindset. Amen. That this culture will just be uh, whatever they want to do, Lord God. Whatever the culture, whatever the kingdom of this world is doing, let it not be inside of our hearts and our minds and that you will develop in us you again by way of Holy Spirit. So we could be conformed more like you, the image of Jesus, um, rather than the conform to this world and its systems. So I pray a hedge of protection for that, Lord God, over our minds, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I pray a hedge of protection over every single family member and my whole bloodline, from the very youngest to the very oldest and everyone in between. I come against any generational curse, any demonic influence in my family and every single family that's represented, um, that's listening or watching. In the holy, mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your word today as we devote our time to see what you have for us today in the book of Acts. And I pray by faith, Lord God, that you would dispatch the angels that are assigned to our lives, that they will be on full alert and there will be no way that the enemy can engulf our mind or distract us today because we are um, in the image of you, we are made. And because we are made in your image, you have angels encamped around us because we love you. And therefore, we are protected from head to toe. And I thank you for all of that in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 60 seconds. When we come back, we're going to go into Acts chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Let's go for it. seconds is fast. So let's get into Acts chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Amen. Uh, we need to see the evidence. Is there enough evidence in my life and in your life that God is good? Why do I say that? Because if God, if people don't see the goodness of God in us, the, repres the re ambassadors of Christ, the representation of him on this planet, then where, where are they going to find the evidence at? Like, think about it. Where else are they going to find the evidence of God's goodness if they can't see it in the body of Christ? So evidence of God and his goodness. Very powerful um, scripture here. Um, it makes me think all the time of how, um, how we could get this back. Amen. If we have lost this, how we could get it back. And God will show us right now. He's faithful. He's good. Evidence of God and his goodness. 
Bible says in Acts chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. In the past, he, God, permitted all the nations to go their own ways. But he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he sends you rain and good crops and gives you food and joyful hearts. We might miss this. In the past, God permit, he permitted all the nations, all the nations, see that, to go their own ways. Now, let me ask you an honest question. Are the nations being permitted to go their own ways to this very day? Some, some might say, yeah, you know, the nations are doing what they're doing. Others might say, no. Well, I know this for sure. My nation is going their own way. United States of America is going their own their own way. But there is a kingdom of God, a rule and a reign that we're under the principles of. And there's a body of Christ that connects us with the head of the church, which is Christ, that's still here. And while we're still here, although God will permit the nation to go its own way, but while we're still here, they can't deny that God has shown them evidence of himself and his goodness in their time, in this time. We are still here, ladies and gentlemen, Holy Spirit-filled, born-again believers, fired up for the glory of God, glory carriers, followers of the way, the truth, and the life. We are still here. So as long as we're still here as believers and brothers and sisters in the Lord, they cannot deny that God has not left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. Why? Because they see, they see when God sends the rain and good crops and gives them food and joyful hearts. We should be those people that are full of this rain, right? And full of the good crops and gives the food out so we could see the joyful hearts. Shouldn't we be the ones taking care of handling business like that. It's just a thought, man. So I'm like, we got everything we need to live this out. And yet, uh, a lot of people are forfeiting their, their right, their inheritance. For what? Scraps from this world? For what? For a good time? For what? For a fling? For what? To have a mistress or to cheat on your wife, cheat on your husband? What are you exchanging Right from what you have now in the Lord to what the world is offering. What kind of deal is that? Because that'll be you're shortchanging yourself. You're short circuiting your connection with the most powerful being ever, the Lord Jesus, God Himself. So there's plenty of evidence. You can see it. All you gotta do is look. Amen. The evidence of God is right in front of you. Evidence of God and his goodness. Have you seen it lately? Has God touched you with this evidence? Has God shown you this evidence? Has God been with you to engage your heart and your mind? Do you see the goodness of God in today's world? And like I said, the way things are going, man, I, I understand it's hard for a lot of people to, to see the goodness of God. But it all depends on what you're looking at, what you're focusing your attention to. If you're focusing your attention on politics, if you're focusing your attention on uh, gender identity, if you're focusing your focus, your attention to crime and killing and wars and rumors of wars, that's going to keep you there. It's going to show you the wickedness of men's hearts. It's going to show you the wickedness of the world system. It's going to show, yeah, and that's going to reveal itself. But when you look at the God who is sovereign, in control, ultimately, not running this world. I don't know how many times I'm going to remind people, oh, why would God allow this to happen in our world? Well, he's not running the world system. Have you not noticed that? It's not God. Holiness is not running this nation. Wickedness is running this nation. That's why God made it clear. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. I mean, we we read the word and we forget that how powerful that is. Of course, we're in this world together. We're all in the same boat. 
and the boat is sinking, but guess what? God's children are not going to drown. Amen? So what do we do? We're telling people, listen, the boat is sinking, and there's life rafts all around the boat. You need to get on one of those life rafts. You need to get on one of those, uh, you know, those boats that will lead you to safety. And people are looking right at us and saying, nah, I'd rather go down with the boat. Everybody else is there. I'd rather go down with the boat. So what do we do? We keep on asking people, hey, uh, are you going to get off the boat with us? We keep on sharing the gospel, the good news, because we see the goodness of God. There's tremendous amount of evidence of God's goodness all around us and in us and working through us. Amen. I could talk to a brother or sister in Christ right now and on the other side of the world, and we could talk about the goodness of God. Whatever they're seeing, whatever chaos they're going through in their nation, amen, whatever chaos I'm going through in my nation, we could still see the goodness of God because there's evidence of God and his goodness all around us, amen? So we don't have to look too hard. Some of us may need help in this area. Some of us may be saying, okay, Sam, okay, you don't, I don't see God's goodness. What has God done for me lately? Some people have that in their hearts, Amen. I was watching a video the other day and the lady told the evangelist, where was God when? When this happened, when that happened, where was God when? And a lot of people, I understand, feel that way. Where was God when I needed him to rescue my son and my daughter? Where was God when my child was um, born with uh, a disease and, and passed away? Where was God, right? God is where he always has been. He's on the throne. Of our hearts, he's on the throne of heaven, amen. He's in position of the most high God, amen. He's inside every single Holy Ghost filled believer, amen. He's in your situation, he's he speaks loudly, um, in your joy, uh, in your pain, right? And he's quietly speaking in your in your joy, amen. He's there. Um, you're looking for the wrong God if you think that God is not with you through the tough times. You're looking for a God that maybe you could um, rub on uh, a vase or something like a genie in a bottle and presto, he will give you all your wishes. That's not the God that we serve. The God that we serve, he doesn't grant the wishes. Amen. He is the holder of all the promises of his word over your life and my life. And he's the one who's sovereign in control of our lives. But we have to submit to him, resist the devil. Amen. And the devil will flee. A lot of times we blame God for the bad things that happen and forget that there's an enemy that's after God's creation, that hates God's creation, and he's creating all the chaos. It's not God that's always hurting or allowing hurt to happen. We have an enemy, amen? And because we're in a war, there will be casualties. The devil is like a caged lion right now. Stay prayed up. Yes, the devil's out there to kill, steal, and destroy. He's on his assignment. And ladies and gentlemen, God reigns over the devil. The devil is a defeated foe, right? Number one. And we have God in us, Holy Spirit God. So that way we could submit to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. So God is not, it's not God versus the devil. No, the devil's already defeated. The devil's trying to take as many people uh, with him and deceive as many people as he can before his time runs out. He knows his time, he knows his time is short. Amen. Um, so he's like uh, one of those runaway trains trying to take down anything in its way. Amen. Sister Joanne, God bless you. Welcome, welcome to the Morning Devo. Um, Joanne said, I asked my brothers and sisters to pray for me for tomorrow. I got, I go to for surgery. Amen. So, Father, I thank you that you will be with Sister Joanne continuously in, in her life, in her health. And with her in her surgery, Lord God, that you would give every single surgeon um, the wisdom and the understanding to do what needs to be done. And they would do it with excellence. And that you would send, Lord God, angels to the operation room, Lord God. And that they will govern and they will cover her um, from anything that will poss- can possibly go wrong in the powerful name of Jesus. And the brothers and sisters in Christ say amen and amen. I truly believe that God has a, a, a hold on my sister Joanne, amen, on her life, amen. She's been through much, and much she has gone through. Um, she has gone through it. She has not been defeated by anything that she has faced. And you can ask her, that that's to be true. So evidence of God and his goodness. I thought about it, and I was like, man, uh, are we missing this? I don't want to miss this. I don't want to be that guy that misses the goodness of God when it's right in front of me. 
If you walk around with positive people, you will always have reasons to believe. You will always have reasons of hope. You will always have a positive outlook on things, even when things are not going good. Haven't you noticed that things don't go good every day, even if you're a Christian or not? Things don't go good every day. Why? Because we're living in a broken, fallen world. And the brokenness of this world, if we're not careful, we could attach the brokenness of the soul that was the unsaved soul, the old person, and it might try to reinvent itself in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in a way that we speak. And we can't allow that. We're not doing that as believers. Amen? We resist. We submit to God. Resist the devil. And I don't know why this scripture keeps on coming up, but that's for somebody today. The formula um, to stay in the, in the will of God is to submit to him. Resist the devil. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And the devil himself will flee from you. Speak in the name of Yeshua, Jesus will make the demons flee. Because what happens is, if we're looking for evidence of God, let's see um, if this God is really real over my life and over what these Christians are saying. Um, how would you find God, right, if you're not looking for him with your whole heart? If you're looking for God based on what you think God should do in your life or who God should be in your life or what God should be like or look like, then you're looking for the wrong God. The God that we serve, ladies and gentlemen, is an invisible God, yet he makes himself seen. He reveals himself uh, through creation. He reveals himself through other believers. He, re he reveals himself through his word. You ever pray to God and immediately got a response from him? I have. Have you prayed to God and you're still waiting for the response? That happened to me too. So we can't develop a God or construct a God or invent the God that would do exactly what we want to do. God does what he wants to do. And everything that God does ultimately is good. We might not understand what he's doing. We might not know why he did the thing the way he did it. But there's plenty of evidence of God and his goodness. So in the book of Acts, um, the disciples were seeing it. The people that were around the disciples were seeing the goodness of God. They prayed to God, asked God. They were laying hands on the sick and they were recovering um, they were casting out demons everywhere they went when there was a demon. And that was evidence enough for them. They, that was first century church. They, they knew that there was a God by way of Holy Spirit. They walked. Many of them saw Jesus. Many of them walked with Jesus. Many of them were uh, around Jesus. Many, many of them heard the voice of the Lord. Amen. And now Jesus had ascended, sent back his Holy Spirit. Now they're out there. They're outside doing what God had called them to do. They're, in the past, they knew that God permitted all the nations to go their own ways. That's why when Holy Spirit came down, right, in the 120, in the upper room, when the Holy Spirit came, the promised Holy Spirit, fiery tongues, they came out speaking the language of all the nations. Because God was calling all the nations back. The ones that he allowed to go their own ways. Now God is calling all the nations back. And the people were like, how are these uneducated people speaking in these different languages when we know they don't know our language? Well, that's because Holy Spirit was speaking through them. And then Apostle Peter said a, a, a sermon, spoke a sermon, preached, and thousands got saved all in one shot right then and there. Why? Because God's calling the nations back. He permitted because God is a God of grace. Right. And mercy. He peeped the nations. If you read Old Covenant, Old Testament, the nations wanted to do what they wanted to do. God wanted to be their king. And they said, nah, we want a king like those nations. So what did God do? He said, all right, you don't want me to be the king over your nation. Then go ahead. God permitted all the nations to go their own ways. But this is how good God is. But. He never, he never, ever, ever left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. Find a portion of scripture or find a believer or find somebody who had an encounter with the living God. Find somebody and ask them, is God good? And they would, without blinking an eye, they would say, of course, yes, he is. He's always, he's always good to me. He always has been good. When you look back at your life before Christ, you'd be like, wow, God is, is good. He saved me, rescued me um, to this very day. I'm, I'm saying I can't believe that I got out of some situations surrounded by 
um, well, I'm not going to say the name of the gangs, but surrounded by certain gangs that were known for slicing faces at the time when I was growing up as a teenager. And there's not a scar on my face. Who was that? Who got me out of those situations? It wasn't me. I couldn't fight 15, 20 guys in one shot and avoid getting sliced on my face. That had to be someone praying for my safety. That had to be an angel that was sent to guard, guide, and protect me. Even though I wasn't believing in this holy God and this rescuing God and this God of grace and mercy and this powerful protecting God, I wasn't believing in him at the time. Someone was or some people were and they were praying for me. There's no other explanation. So there's evidence of God. Even in the past, in my past, in your past, that you have to admit, so man, that had to be that had to be the mercy of God. That had to be the grace of God. That had to be God protecting me. But there were people, right? The prayers of the righteous availeth much. There were people praying for you and praying for me. No other evidence. No other explanation. But that's evidence of God and his goodness. So many ways I could tell you that God is good. Amen. But you have to think about it for yourself. I don't want to be the person, just the only person talking about God's goodness. God is good. And if you think about it clearly, you will see the goodness of God everywhere you go. Every time you're in need, God supplies your need. Why? Because he's the God who provides. He sees your needs and he sees my needs and provides for every single one of those needs. Wants are a different thing. I might want something that might seemingly help me, might seemingly help you, but it might be a device that the enemy could use to destroy us. So God is not too much concerned about what we want. What do you want, Sam? He's more concerned about what we need because he knows at the end of the day, what we needed and what we have will last longer than what we wanted because we didn't need it. Sometimes I want things, yeah, because it'll help the ministry, it'll help this, it'll help that person. Praise the Lord. But then God will exchange for what I want, for what I need, and what I get from God that I need it lasts way longer than I want. As a matter of fact, I'll forget that I wanted something when God supplies the need. What about you? That's evidence of God and his goodness. So other than if you see or not, if you see the goodness of God or not, I have to be honest, I know a lot of people won't see the goodness of God when they're going through things, when they're going through struggles, issues, when they're having health issues, whatever. They might not see it right away. But amen, I'm here to encourage you that you can see the goodness of God when you speak to him, when you ask of him, when you know him, when you follow his commandments, when you read his word, when you're around his people, when you go to church that's filled with Holy Spirit God that preaches the crucified Christ, you will see the goodness of God. But what other ways... Have you seen evidence of God and his goodness? Other ways, it could have been through you walked in to a place um, that was getting robbed and you were safe and other people got hurt. That's a way of God protecting you. You can see his goodness there. It could be um, that your bank account was like pretty much on E, but bills were being paid. And um, collectors were calling you and say, oh, thank you for your payment. You're like, I didn't pay nothing. How does that happen? If you look at the math, you look at the amount of bills that I have stacked up in the table in front of me, and you look at my account sometimes, you look at me like, um, how are you paying your bills? And I look at you like, God's provided. I work, yeah, but sometimes there's more month than money, but I still rely on God, amen? And I'm trying to, it's not God's fault, by the way, that I'm behind in bills. It's my fault because I have to be a better steward of what God is giving, amen? And by doing that, and by saying that, I know I'm not alone, so I can honestly say, um, yeah, I'm behind in some bills. What about you? But God is faithful. He's good. It's not his fault sometimes. Well, anytime it's not God's fault. But I'm saying we can't blame God. What I'm saying is we cannot blame God for things that we did wrong. And the same way, people who are looking for the evidence of God and the goodness of God can not blame God for not finding that evidence of his goodness when you're doing something completely opposite of what he wanted you to do. Or you're following the wrong God, period. People are following idols. You know, they're into all kind of, you know, other deities. They're praying to statues, putting jewelry on as if those jewelry um, can help them. Uh, you know, they're involved with people who are in their cult and disguising themselves as, um, you know, holy people. 
and they're not. So we surround ourselves with the brethren, with the followers of the way, the truth, and the life, the followers of Jesus. Once you go in that surrounding, once you have those people surrounding you, you'll be in a great cloud of witnesses. You will find the goodness of God through them, or the evidence of God through creation, the evidence of God through when he provides, the evidence of God in your sickness, when he heals you, when he gets you out of it. And even sometimes when we don't get out of the sickness, on the other side of that, when if he says, okay, your time here is over, on the other side, as a believing person, as a, as a follower of Jesus, as a child of God, you're going to see his goodness on the other side. So we will have the evidence. We will see his evidence. I was in a serious accident, and by the grace of God, I survived. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, right? You have to give it to God. I heard a story like this. Thank you for sharing that. I heard a story that there was a, a plane uh, full of passengers, and the plane was in turbulence, and one of the engines um, went down. So, you know, they make the announcement. They don't want people to get too nervous or anything like that. Um, but they said, okay, uh, we're in you know, heavy turbulence. Um, they didn't say nothing about the engine until later. Um, things came down, the mask and everything, put on your seatbelt, whatever. Uh, you know, just prepare yourselves. And they made, gave the instructions. Plane started going down. And the man on the plane that's telling the story was like, a lot of people were now, you know, uh, praying to God, asking God to help them. A lot of people were calling out to God. Of people who probably never witnessed to anyone in their lives were now praying to God. The plane, plane was going down. The story guy, the guy who was telling the story, the plane was going down. And then all of a sudden, like probably minutes before um, there was going to be a fatal crash, um, the engine turned back on and the plane started rising up. And the people started clapping. And then when they landed, they clapped more because they knew that they almost got killed. They almost got wiped out. So uh, after that, you know, people were thanking God and some people were saying that wasn't God. That was the pilot and the stand the third. But when he got off the plane, he started asking people, um, according to what almost happened to all of us, um, you could thank the pilot. Um, you could thank this. But the pilot was like baffled. He didn't know how the plane's engine turned back on. So he didn't really know. It, he really didn't know how it happened. But the person in the story was like, who do you think then? Like, who do you think after the pilot said, listen, I don't, I don't know how that happened. Who do you think then? The person that you thought rescued you um, is telling you, no, it wasn't me. Who do you think then? You thank God. He's the one who does the impossible. He's the one who saves, rescues, restores, redeems. He's the one who gives us the born again experience. He's the one who knows things before they happen. He's the one who has us in the palm of his hands. And the Bible says no one can snatch us out of the palm of God's hands. The evidence and his goodness, amen, are all around us. His evidence to me is enough. But I'm trying to encourage those who are struggling right now during this season to try to see the evidence of God and his goodness. That's a, that's a thing. People go through that type of struggle because there's so much on their plate. There's so much going on. So much struggle. There's so much pain. So much killing and dying and murder. There's so much going on. And I understand I'm in the same world you're in. But if I don't, I don't have to look hard to see the goodness of God. And I want you to come to that place where you could turn to the scriptures and you could see the, the disciples that came before us in the scriptures in the past they know that God permitted all the nations to go their own ways. And it seems like God is still permitting nations to go their own ways. But he's calling the nations back. How? Through the commissioned ones, the ones who are going to preach the gospel. We are calling the nations back. We are asking them to surrender their lives to the Lord. We are asking them to repent. Stop turning their own ways and turn towards the way that God wanted the nations to go to originally. Remember the old covenant? God said, I want to be the king of your nation. And they were like, no, we don't want you to be the king of our nation. We want those kings that the other nations have. We want a king like the other nations. That's been going on ever since the old covenant. But Jesus came and he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And he came, he, right, he lived, died on the cross, laid down his life right on the cross, was buried. Three days later, he rose from the grave. Then he ascended to the right hand of the Father, to the right 
side of the throne. And he sent back one just like him to live within us, to occupy this time, this space, and this earth until he comes back. We have the promise. And in between the time that we got saved and the time that Jesus is coming back, there's plenty of evidence. I can tell you that. There's plenty of evidence of God's goodness in my life and in your life, in your situation and my situation, in your circumstance and in my circumstance on this planet. There's plenty of evidence. Brother Benny, God bless you, my friend and my bro. Amen. God has been so good to me and my family. My son Benny is proof of a miracle in our lives. We serve an amazing God. Yes, we do. And that's what I'm saying. I'm encouraging people. Testify, man. You'll see the goodness of God, what he has done for you in the past, what he can do for you in the future, and what he's doing for you right now, reminding you of how good he is. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Benny, for sharing that. God bless you, my bro. So listen, I'm out of here. I'm out of time. But I bless you all. I thank you for hanging out with me for this morning, Devo. Read Acts chapter 14. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. So that way you can see that there's plenty of evidence of the goodness of God. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.